Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ballet Brand here, the Sci Viving Hexagon. Uh, we're doing what I committed to at the beginning of the year, uh, just last month, right? Almost uh, two months ago. But um, at least doing one video per month. So, once again, sometimes life gets in the way, sometimes other things kind of not get in the way, but kind of consume more of your time. Anyways, uh, this is this video specifically, uh, I've been actually thinking about a lot and I have been uh, practicing what I'm preaching and what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, what I am going to be talking about in this video is that I, I talk about how like, hey, you know, technology uh, and, and one of the one of the friends that I have, he says, your, your gift can be your bane, right? What? What is your great? Uh, what is your great attribute? Can be your your bane, right? Your weakness, your ultimate weakness. Anyways, um, I talk about how technology can be a tool, or you could literally use this technology to watch porn all day. You know, what good is that doing for the world? Nothing, especially not for your nervous system, right? Anyways, um, so what I want to talk about once again in this video specifically is just going to be about social media, nothing else just social media and how studies have showed this. And I probably should have done a little bit more due diligence to maybe pull out some actual research, right? On the, uh, the side effects and the mental health implications that can come from uh, social media use, any kind of use, right? But especially excessive use. And once again, this was supposed to be, and is supposed to be a tool. It's not supposed to be something that people glamour on on TikTok or on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, uh, it's like a depression thing where it's painting a reality and a certain picture that is not actually congruent with how reality is. And so all of these people that are on Instagram or on Twitter and stuff like this, they might think that, oh, this person's life is perfect because, you know, it's like a DJ. They're curating the photos. They're curating the, you know, a DJ specifically is curating good music, right? But people on social media, they do the same thing with, with photos and with videos. And growing up um, as a, you know, growing up in my family, myself and my brothers were really good at acting, right? Pretending like, oh, our family was all jolly and happy and stuff when in reality it wasn't behind closed doors. But that's kind of what everyone thought on the outside. And so many people were able to easily be convinced uh, even some of the parents' best friends, which is pretty naive of them. Anyways, the point that I want to get at is that social media really is a tool. And I don't care what community it is. I see uh, a lot of people that spend you know, probably more time than they probably should be, right, on social media. And it's a good way to fill time, fill time, right? Um, and it's a good way to feel con convenient, right, to feel... Uh, Sorry, not convenient, but to feel uh, relevant for these people. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whoops, the, the video that I wanted to share uh, was just up a second ago. Let me pull it up again real quick. As far as mental health, like where, what, ha do you have problems in that area ever? Do you ever feel like you fall into ruts that you can't get yourself out of naturally? Do you ever feel like that's something that no, obviously that's something that no one talks about? Mm hmm <laughs> I, I guess this this segue is nicely from the whole like traps that guys find themselves in one of those being like social media because everything's out there and to your point like surround yourself with good people to, and to my own as well like have that self-awareness and that quiet meditative time to be able to figure yourself out and not what everyone else is saying on social media because that can be like this this programming whether it's subconscious or not you just get these like ideas, these narratives going in your head, not realizing there's someone else's narratives. So creating your own narrative is so important. And anytime I've found myself in a mental health rut, it's been because I'm usually living someone else's narrative or not mm. taking enough control of my own, not leading, right? Not leading the life that is yours, which no one else is going to lead that. Okay, so I did have to jump cut this because uh, normally I wear a headphone in for stuff like this, but had it playing on the external speaker. So there's a couple of seconds that'll be cut out. So what Gerardo was saying right there, and let me come back to full screen because that's all I wanted to use the video for, was that once again, he brings up a very good point that anytime he had been in uh, a mental rut or maybe 
um, yeah, just once again, dealing with some, some mental health issues, right? Whatever that means to each individual, uh, mental health is such a broad category of term. But the point that he had made that was very relevant was that oftentimes that he had found himself in depression or whatever, uh, he was living someone else's narrative and someone else's kind of paradigm that they had, you know, chose for him, whether it was the, you know, right path or not, or whether it was, le uh, sorry, legitimate or not. And so the thing I want to encourage people with is that I see so many people and, and once again, I mentioned that, hey, you know, you can use this for, you know, you can literally use this to build your lexicon, to learn stuff every single day, or you can use this to, you know, jerk off to porn all day or whatever. You can also use this to bitch and complain how, how bad the world is. And, and also you see so many people getting addicted to this, you know? And it's, it's a not a healthy addiction to get uh, involved in and to get trapped in because what you see is that uh, I know different addictions, especially uh, with, with hard drugs and stuff can be like this as well, but specifically with social media where, where now your, your dopamine, it's not actually, and this isn't always all the, the time and always the, uh, the case for every single person in every single scenario. But what you find out is that, you know, now you want to constantly uh, share, you know, your good experiences with other people, even though, you know, you're probably just trying to farm and harvest uh, likes and attention and stuff, even though that might not actually be fulfilling to you. And so the only thing that I wanted to say is just from my own personal experience, because once again, that's really all I can do, is that now that I'm retired as a 25-year-old, retired when I was 24, uh, I was spending a lot of time, a lot of my excess time, right? I still consume a lot of YouTube videos because I'm always constantly learning and constantly reading information and just absorbing like a sponge, right? Um, that's a that's a, a curiosity and, and satisfaction that will never be satisfied, right? But I was spending a lot of my time, the excess time and free time um, on social media and just consuming a whole bunch of other people's narratives and a whole bunch of other people's bitching and complaining and once again, their sob stories or their glory stories, which once again, why am I reading theirs when they could be reading mine or I could be building mine, as Gerardo has said. So once again, that's just kind of like the crux of this video is that um, what is the definition of addiction, right? If you look at it from an actual definition, which is that if you, if you take the thing, whether it's a drug, whether, uh, you know, it's something like sex, right? Um, like endorphins, I guess. Um, you know, natural hormones is what I mean. Um, or, or anything else, say social media. Well, the definition of addiction is when you remove that thing. Let's just say, I don't know. Let's just say a hard drug as an example. Let's just say heroin or cocaine or methamphetamine. Well, you know, the person takes it. And then if you now remove that item, that hard drug in this example, now they're going to suffer withdrawals. That's the definition of addiction is when the person's actually uh, experiencing some sort of withdrawal once that thing is removed, whether it's the social media or the porn or the hard drugs. So once again, addictions usually start off slow and it seems like nonchalant and stuff. And then for me personally, I was experiencing myself because uh, because I've got, you know, a smartwatch now and then, you know, data on my phone analytics to measure how much screen time I'm actually spending. And it tells me, uh, it breaks it down by category into each individual app that I was spending time on. And I kid you not, I was spending like six to seven hours a day on Twitter. And I honestly, I, I should probably do a comparison and contrast in the future for maybe an update video on this. But I can promise you, uh, if I, so it used to go uh, per day, right? And then you can break it down per week. But from what used to be six to seven hours a day, I kid you not, is maybe three to five minutes a day at most. And some days it's not even at all because I just know that if I pull up twitter.com, you know, slash ballet at brand, that I'm just going to, you know, get sucked into a portal, like a rabbit hole of, uh, of, of chaos, calamity. Uh, you know, sometimes people either, either love you or hate you and stuff like this. And, and once again, um, at the end of the day, it really is a tool but it is also a crutch for a lot of people. And I see a lot of people that are just so unhappy in life that are just, you know, they're, they're mouth breathing and they're just mindlessly scrolling, you know, on their phone.
And that's not something that's healthy for society. You see a lot more of it in, in people that are just constantly on social media all day, where they're a lot more prone to bitching and complaining, which once again is not going to do the world any good, right? Especially if there are things that people already know that's going on. Well, then just saying that there's a problem doesn't actually address the problem. If anything, it just creates more of that problem because they're not involving any solutions on how to fix it. They're just, you know, revealing maybe what someone didn't realize was there before. So that's the very last thing I wanted to say is that once again, uh, I know I haven't been, you know, once again, I'm going to stick to the commitment, right? In March, I'll be doing at least one video. Who knows? I might have five or 10 or, you know, <laughs> more than one video, right, to post. But some months are a little bit different. And at the end of the day, I've just been really working on myself, um, spending uh, a lot less time on social media, which is what I was doing before. And now it's just spending a lot more time, uh, once again, constantly improving, educating, learning, uh, spending time with my family, right? Loved ones, relationships, et cetera. And kind of just realizing the beauty in life because I promise you that, I mean, sure, you can see the beauty in life uh, on on you know YouTube or certain social medias and stuff like this. But usually it's, uh, it's, it's that media saying where it's like, uh, you know, fear sells. And fear is usually what people remember more than say something like, you know, puppies playing in a little field or something video that you saw on YouTube. You, you, you tend to notice more the, the fear and the distractions and the, you know, blatant uh, time waste erroneous is what Richard Hart would call it back in the day. So anyways, much love everyone. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. I know I definitely am. And once again, uh, even if you think it, it's just a good test, right? Hey, okay, you think that you've got your, um, you know, your little caffeine addiction or your tea addiction, right, uh, under control, right? You know, oh, you know, I just have one or two cups of coffee a day or one or two cups of tea a day or, you know, a couple hours of social media per day. I would challenge people to just as an experiment, if you say you actually can control it and things like this, and, you know, hey, if you don't want to, that's totally fine, but it would be an interesting thought experiment for people that thought they had control, or even if there's not a problem, to just maybe abstain for, for one day, or or just maybe look at some of those analytics like I did of how much time you were spending uh, per each application, and it'll tell you how much screen time, uh, how much your phone was actually awake, and then how much time in each individual application you were spending. And that's all I wanted to say in this video. Um, I know mental health is a big, big issue that so many people deal with on a daily basis and it doesn't get covered very often at all because it's not popular, right? It's not kosher. It's more kosher for people to bitch and complain and say they got anxiety and all these other different mental health issues versus actually solving the actual core of the problem. Maybe that person doesn't need to be taking these fucking benzodiazepines or anti-anxiety drugs that will addict you and that will probably eat your brain a lot more quickly than some of this other stuff, maybe they should, uh, and, and once again, this is just my opinion, but maybe they should look into uh, some of these metrics first. You know, hey, if that person's spending 10 hours a day on social media, maybe correlation doesn't equal causation in that regard. Maybe they don't need to be taking the, uh, the substances that are going to be like a Band-Aid. Maybe they can actually look at what the root of the problem is. But once again, most people these days, they're not interested and they could care less about what the root of the problem is. All they want is just the fix right now. And most people don't want to put in the work to actually have, um, you know, lasting changes and significant impact. So once again, I know this is a Valiant brand, like sci-viving, hexagon, self-help and stuff. And I know this, uh, not that I've read specifically that this part was in sci-vive. Um, but once again, a lot of this stuff is just kind of like my own documentary and own like yeah, I guess just own journey and things that I've learned and things that I've been able to anecdotally speak from. Because uh, once again, theory is just theory, but anecdote is actual history and it's actual like experience. So that's pretty much all I have to say, everyone. Uh, much love. And uh, yeah, hopefully in March, I can look at some, some, more, some more topics that I want to cover because once again, I'm spending a lot less time on social media. And I'm really happy about that too, because the few minutes a day that I will go on to social media just to see if I missed anything from Richard Hart or anything that was important. 
usually I'll find out that there's not. And usually I'll find out that, uh, you know, once again, people are just wasting a whole bunch of time bickering. You know, they're, they're bickering. Whoops. Uh, get the can't get the mic out of the way They're They're bickering back and forth and stuff. And in reality, they're just, they're like this, you know, they're, they're talking at the wall. Like no one really cares, dude. And uh, you're not going to convince the person, even if you could, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what benefit would that serve? So anyways, that's where I'm going to end the video now. Much love everyone. We'll see everyone next time and uh, take it.